and temperate fall days in Indiana after walking a mile home from school, I'd be greeted by my dad. He'd be sitting in the driveway in his old beat up folding chair, signature ball cap on his head, always worn backwards, holding a basketball, a few plastic cones at his feet, maybe the hint of a dimple on his face. And I knew no matter how much homework I had, the first thing I was going to do was practice. Growing up in, D in Indiana, it was hard not to catch some of that iconic Hoosier hysteria surrounding high school and college basketball. Basketball was actually invented at Springfield College in Massachusetts by Dr. James Naismith, but Hoosiers believe that Indiana is the center of the sport. The hysteria runs <laughs> so deep that there was once a high school basketball game held in Indiana with over 40,000 people in attendance for a high school basketball game. Imagine the rattling of the bleachers before a big play, members of the school band with contrasting levels of talent, all bleeding out a fight song, the taunting, the cheering, the energy, all to watch some gangly teenagers miss crucial free throws. <laughs> However ridiculous it seems, for Hoosiers, there's a great feeling of tradition in it. So when I showed interest in basketball at a young age, how could it be casual? I was a Hoosier, and it was basketball. <laughs> when I was in fourth grade, my mom signed me up for the YMCA girls basketball team. I had only played a couple of years before that, but I will admit, I did have game. <laughs> I'm talking Bugs Bunny Space Jam game. <laughs> I wasn't the best ball handler around because my own limbs and general coordination feel like that of a cartoon character at times, but I had a great shot. When I showed up to my first practice, however, I was so embarrassed to learn that my mom had signed me up for the seven to nine year old age group rather than the 10 to 12 league. As a, March bir a late March birthday, I did still qualify. As a young and fiery Aries, however, I saw this to be an insult to my talent. <laughs> did she not think I could hang with the big kids? But I forgot about all of that pretty quickly uh, when I started to play in the games. I was almost a year older <laughs> than any other girl in my league and about a head taller. <laughs> I know they weren't keeping official stats, but I was easily the top scorer. I was absolutely raining down on these poor losers. <laughs> like, it wasn't even fair. <laughs> Smoking fools on the court felt good, but it felt even better when my dad would watch me play. My dad wasn't a super affectionate guy. Uh, he's softer now, but I'm not sure if it's a, him actually being sentimental or from regret that he couldn't be our whole lives. Because rather than communicating his words with pride, I would earn it by reciting his favorite movie quotes or his favorite starting lineups for the teams he loved. But basketball was the one thing that my dad and I really had in common. Despite me trying to like all his movies and desperately understand why he loved Alice Cooper and Nine Inch Nails so much. <laughs> He's the kind of dad who would tell stories about being this great high school athlete, playing multiple positions on the football team, including, of course, quarterback. Legend has it he actually turned down a scholarship from Harvard to go to Indiana University. Considering how often he brings it up, I'm not sure why he did. <laughs> He's that dad sitting under the basketball hoop in the driveway, waiting for us to drop our backpacks inside so we could run through what he called the fundamentals. Ball handling, boxing out, layups, and free throws. You should always make your free throws. They are free. <laughs> In reflecting, he was between jobs at the time uh, while he was doing this, and on days we'd run drills, he probably wouldn't have started drinking till after we were done, which is kind of a nice gesture. <laughs> He's the kind of dad that would get scolded by my mom for encouraging us to play a little too rough. They're not boys, Mike, she would say. But another one of my dad's fundamentals was be aggressive. <laughs> Later, I learned that he always wanted a son. But after having me and my twin sister, he and my mom never agreed on shooting for three. <laughs> I'm not sure if I ever really loved playing basketball, but I did love impressing my dad.
by making over 70% of my free throws. Ah, <laughs> There was one YMCA game in, partic in particular where I was just heating up. I had already made more baskets than anyone else on the team. My mom, my sister, and my dad were all there to watch, and I could feel it. That little bit of Hoosier hysteria, or as much as you can muster for a fourth grader's YMCA basketball game. <laughs> Late into the third quarter, I was running down the sideline behind the benches, taking the ball across half court, when suddenly I was stuck. I'd somehow planted my feet in the corner parallel to the basketball goal and got caught by a defender. I was trapped. But I wasn't willing to give up the ball. <laughs> I had the best shot on the team. And I knew committing a double dribble was against the fundamentals and would cost my team the possession. So I put up my shot, by far the most ambitious one I had ever taken. I flicked my wrist sending my ball through the air as what felt like the entire room sucked in their breath. And boom, nothing but net, I was on fire. Woo! The coach of the other team behind me, despite himself, actually said, nice shot. <laughs> I made the cheers. I flashed my eyes to the seats my family had taken to find two empty chairs there. And my mom giving me the most apologetic double thumbs up. Do you know how hard it is to look apologetic while you're doing a double thumbs up? <laughs> <laughs> the best shot of my basketball career so far, and my dad wasn't there to see it. All these scenarios ran through my head. Was there an emergency? Was he hurt by a ball from the other concurrent games in the gym hurtling towards the stands? Did he get up for a quick trip to the restroom and lose consciousness on the way there? As it turns out, he and my sister had gotten up to get a Subway sandwich in the lobby. Because she was hungry. And a stupid six-inch Italian BMT on wheat of all breads <laughs> made my dad miss my best shot. My mom, of course, recounted all the details on the car ride home how, about how I was backed into that corner and how everybody was so amazed and how even the other team's coach was impressed. But and my dad seemed proud, and I went on to make plenty more baskets that he would actually see. But that moment has always been colored with disappointment. The summer before my freshman year of high school, I got over basketball. I played in the summer league at my intended school, and while I still had my shot, I had lost some of my competitive edge. My dad watched from the bleachers as I warmed the bench particularly hard one scrimmage. On the car ride home, I remember nonchalantly telling my parents I may not even try out for the team. My sights already set on a number of extracurriculars listed in the packet that they had given us at the open house weeks prior. I'm not sure my dad said anything against it, but his look in the rearview mirror might have been colored with disappointment. I threw myself into theater, improv, and writing, things my dad couldn't give me the fundamentals for. I learned them on my own. I surprised myself on stage. Being fairly shy as a kid, pursuing the arts was the most unlike thing, unlike me thing that I could do, but it was the most like me I ever felt. Years later, in a crowded little theater on Santa Monica Boulevard, I made my professional stage debut in Los Angeles. My dad was there in the audience, beyond the first two rows of seats, just out of sight. I acted alongside the supremely gifted actor, just me and him, for 45 minutes straight. And we had drilled our blocking and our lines for weeks prior. We had a natural connection, but the pacing was paramount. We pivoted from humorous lines to emotional beats, back and forth, building the play's epic conclusion. It was by far the most ambitious role I'd ever taken. I sheepishly walked out to greet my family at the stage door after the show, not sure what my dad would think. He stood there without words and nodded for a moment. And then smiling, he started to cry. Nothing but net. <laughs> Bridget Murray, everybody. And please welcome back up to the mic your host, Kirsten.